Welcome everybody. Today we're going to talk about setting up fish tanks and some of the things I've learned over the years, obviously working in a store for now it's, you know, over a decade at this point. You learn a lot of things what people are doing that you're like, that seems crazy, but the internet says I should do that. So we're going to cover that whether you're setting up another tank or uh you're just setting up your first tank or you got a buddy setting up a tank. This this topic actually comes from Randy. I asked him what should I talk about and he said, "Oh man, I've got a buddy who's just getting in and he's starting to go down the, the ADA rimless train and I don't know how to stop him. So this is for you, buddy. Uh, first, it's overwhelming. When you do research, there's going to be unlimited ways to do this. Now, you don't know how to quantify if it's, you know, you're talking to someone at the top of the game, top of the pile, or someone in the middle, someone that's also a newbie, um, or, you know, vice versa. So... Uh, I'm just going to start all the way from the basics and move how I kind of progressed and how I think people should progress and then myths and weird things I hear about all the time. And then after that, we'll go Q&A and rants, that kind of stuff. So first thing, picking an aquarium, I always recommend is picking a cheap aquarium. So that's like a dollar a gallon tank, where if you're brand new, you might not know this, but Petco will do... Uh, $1 per gallon. So you can get like a 29 gallon for 29 bucks, that type of thing, all the way up to like 55s. So I, a, a rimmed tank, a normal tank. The reason I like setting up normal tanks is one, I actually prefer the look. And two, parts are readily available and you don't have to get into craziness, right? So one of the things about a rim tank is that rim on the bottom and the top provides some uh, basically buffer between your countertop or uh, fish tank cabinet or wherever you're going to put that tank on and the glass, right? So that's the first thing already you're getting some benefit there. And a lot of people don't realize that. Not so much structural integrity. So like uh, holding the glass panels together, it doesn't really do a whole lot of that. Mostly it's there to prevent any unevenness between where you're going to put that aquarium and when you fill with water, that's what it's doing. So then naturally as humans, we want to do that one step better, right? And so a lot of times we go, well, can I put it on like a mat? Can I put it on styrofoam? And the answer is yes, sometimes. So one of the big things I see is a don't do this is don't put it on styrofoam if it's a glass tank. If it's an acrylic tank, that works fine. Let me explain why. So on a glass aquarium, you've got that rim, right? Well, that rim is meant to set it about half an inch off where you're gonna set it, right? So that glass is right here and the rim's down here. When you set it onto styrofoam and you fill it with water, it sinks in. Well, when you sink it in like that, all that styrofoam is now putting pressure on that bottom pane that was never meant to have pressure on it, the way that tank was constructed. So that can actually cause to early failure in that bottom seal, can actually just crack it sometimes. Yes, would it help level out an uneven surface? Yes, and that's why we use it in acrylic tanks. So the acrylic tanks are made to be supported the entire way across the bottom, right? Well, you might not know that, but now you do. They're made to be supported that way. So you can put them on a piece of like yoga mat or a piece of styrofoam, and that will get any imperfections in the stand or countertop or whatever it is. You know, if you're putting on like a kitchen counter and you have tiles, that's going to be a little bit uneven, right? So you put that down. Um, so... With glass, though, it's meant to be supported on the four corners. So wherever the four corners land, all that force is kind of built to be right there and not on an even surface like an acrylic tank. So that's why we can build stands differently. And when you look at aquarium stands, you're going to see glass tank stands mostly are kind of supported around the edge. So it'll be like hollow in the middle. And then on um, an acrylic tank stand, it'll have a full top to it. So that right there, a lot of people miss, and even veterans don't know that. They just go, oh, yeah, this one's got a piece of wood, that one doesn't, blah, blah, blah. Like, it, there's actually a reason for that difference, and that is because one saves money, and one needs it, and one doesn't. Um, so, yeah, that's like the first thing right there that a lot of people can get in trouble because they're just, like, trying to do one better, right? So then... Someone earlier was asking about tops. Why don't we use acrylic tops? Why do we use glass tops? That type of thing. So when it comes to a top on an aquarium, glass, super cheap, uh, relatively see-through, and mostly that cheap aspect. 
When it comes to acrylic, it's more expensive, but the problem with acrylic is it absorbs water. Now, when we fill an aquarium with water, that's not a problem. But when we're putting it on top, anyone that's built their own acrylic tops, they get that bowing, and that's because it takes on the water and it gets a little heavier. And it's not a ton of water. You're not gonna like see the water, but it does absorb a little bit of water, causes bowing. So all the time you're gonna have to flip that. You keep flipping it so that it bows in different directions. Well, the workaround for that is to use Lexan. Lexan is another type of extruded, basically acrylic, that doesn't absorb the water. And because it doesn't absorb the water, it holds its shape so much better. So if you were gonna do a DIY top out of that, you would use Lexan. Then again, that's another step more expensive than glass. Now, it also come down to wanting a hinge possibly, and I recommend that. So glass, they make glass hinges. You can use that on the acrylic as well, but it's kind of floppy the way you do that. I've, I've done it, and when you build that, it kind of, it wants to bow in the center. So when you go to open it, it's a weird, weird angle. So I recommend a glass top. A lot of people try to save some money there, and maybe they go, well, I don't need a top necessarily. This light has got brackets to mount on there. It's not gonna fall in real careful. What you're not realizing is you're going to keep fish eventually. They're just going to jump out. That's just going to happen. Uh, also, there's a whole evaporation thing going on where I, I actually thought about doing a video of that in my living room. Um, I left the top off for two weeks as I was gone these past two weeks. And we had significant water evaporation where when that top is on, there's essentially zero. And so I thought about doing a month-long comparison of just like taking off. It's got four tops on it. Took off one section let that go for a month and measure it versus putting that on and let it go for a month and measure it. And I think that would really demonstrate how much water evaporation is going on in people's aquariums. So uh, that's another reason to have that one jumping out two evaporation um, three. It holds in heat. That's a big one I've been fighting lately when it comes to uh, just people in aquariums in general. And that is that the heat's going to rise off the top of your water the fastest. And so if you can, put a top over that, that's one of your first ways to start saving money and electricity and getting all those other benefits. Um, when it comes to the heaters, five watts per gallon is a good starting rule. So if you're gonna do a 10 gallon aquarium, at least a 50 watt heater. When you start going to a 30 gallon aquarium, 150 watts. And I find that people really start struggling at kind of like 40, watt, or 40 gallons, 55 gallons, 75 gallons, because at 40 gallons, you should have a 200 watt heater. But a lot of heaters will say like, oh, at 150 watts, it'll handle it. And then at the 55, right, you're supposed to have 250 watts, you know. So then it's either like you got to pick the 200 or kind of the 300 watt heater. Air on the side of the 300 if you're worried about that. And then go ahead and go up to the 75 gallon. And now all of a sudden you're really starting to struggle with a one 300 watt heater. And especially if you don't have a top. And there's so many variables when it comes to setting up an aquarium. Uh, one being room temperature. Is it going to get direct sunlight, that sun, you know, kind of like when you're sitting in a car, right? You got the sun bearing down on you. It gets really hot. The clouds move and all of a sudden you're driving. You're like, wow, it's really hot outside all of a sudden. Much hotter on you when the sun is on you than the air is, right? So that's going to happen to your aquarium also. So just know that kind of, you know, know in the room, is it cold? Is it going to be getting direct sunlight? Is there a door that's going to be opening and closing by it all the time? Is it heavy foot traffic? All those things play a part. And so people buy heaters based on, you know, you grab, I don't have a heater package, of course, but oh, that's not true. I do. All right. Thank you for props. Uh, this is a 25 watt heater and it says it handles a 6.6 .6 gallon tank. Is the heater in here? No. 6.6 .6 gallon tank. And that is true probably like in this room where the door would stay closed. Probably true if it had a glass top, but in a much bigger room that might be cooler, this would really struggle. And a lot of times, like in this specific heater's case, uh, this goes into like beta tanks and that kind of stuff. So basically like five gallon aquariums in people's offices or, or like a school and with their air conditioning kicking on and that kind of stuff it can really just suck the heat right out of one of those aquariums. So we need to be a little more proactive and think about how much heating do I need not what size my aquarium like that does come into play but you know if i take my aquarium and i put it outside we all know oh yeah that's going to take more heat but inside it also takes more heat if you run your house at 60 versus i'm running it at 70 or 65 or you can have the opposite problems too of like oh i live in a really hot climate it's actually 90 and i'm trying to cool my water down 
And so, but five watts per gallon with a glass, gla with, doesn't have to be glass top, with a top uh, can be very, a very good starting point, I find. Now, that being said, I've got a whole video that's going to come out and it hasn't released yet uh, about how we probably don't even need heaters for most of us and for most fish. But that being said, that's kind of an advanced subject and I don't want to take you down that path uh, right away if this is your first aquarium or you're helping someone new get into there. For the most part, it is best to have a heater to get started because you don't know what fish you're going to keep and um, you don't really know what an optimal setup is in terms of space in your home and that type of stuff. All right, what other pitfalls can I think of right off the bat when it comes to uh, the aquarium? So knowing that all those benefits of the glass top, that's why I don't recommend a rimless tank for most people. I don't, I don't really use rimless tanks because I don't like them and mostly because the minimal visual difference I get um, doesn't outweigh the benefits of like all the glass. Cheaper, uh, typically it's gonna have a glass top. And then if I want that visual clearness, I'll go with an acrylic tank. And then so then uh, acrylic also has better insulating properties, just in general, acrylic holds heat better than glass. So uh, you get all these subtle perks. Acrylic also is like much harder to break. Very easy to scratch though. Um, some of the low iron glasses, I feel like when you, okay, so I got to back up a step there because I didn't explain that. A lot of the rimless tanks will be low iron. So what that means is it'll have less green in it. So if you look at the side of your aquarium glass, so if this is the front of your tank, if you were to look at it from this side, so not straight on, right? This is the front of the tank, fish are swimming. If you looked at it from the side panel right here, you could usually see it's really green. That's the iron in the glass. And with like Starfire glass and very high clear glass and stuff like ADA tanks, it'll be a very, very faint green. So it visually looks a little bit better. Most people can't tell. And I've never been in a situation where people are like judging tanks and things like that. And they're like, well, it would have won, but you know, they used normal iron glass and therefore I couldn't see past it. Like I, I never, I myself have never noticed a difference looking at someone's tank and go, wow, that looks extra clear because it's not low iron glass or because it is low iron glass. I've never once even noticed it. So, um, but it does have that aesthetic appeal. But the reason I don't recommend it, for, especially if you're new to this hobby, is because chances are you're going to buy that aquarium and one of two things is going to happen. You're either going to fall in love with it or you're going to hate it. If you fall in love with it, you instantly want a bigger tank. If you hate it, you're going to sell it and you wasted a bunch of money because rimless tanks inherently are just more expensive than normal glass tanks. That being said, a rimless tank is still probably cheaper than an acrylic tank. But when it comes to time to resell, uh, reselling an acrylic tank holds a lot more value than a glass tank. So there's all these little micro pros and cons to that list, but I would recommend getting yourself like a Petco dollar a gallon sale tank or any local store. Like if you happen to be local to the aquarium co-op, I would recommend you actually start with the Fluval Vista tanks. They are an absolute great beginner aquarium. They have curved uh, edges. It comes with an AquaClear filter, which is good in its own right. Comes with the heater installed. Comes with some LED lighting. And they're at a super affordable price point. So uh, I actually really like that. But if you're going to cobble your kit together, I would start with a basic glass tank. And then once you've really refined what you like doing, you could dabble down that uh, rimless tank path. Um, so the other thing... Before you set up your next tank, don't get rushed. It's really easy to be setting up a tank because you're about to buy fish or they're going to land in a few days if you ordered them or your fish store just got them and they're holding them for three days. you got to set up a tank. That leads you down a path of rushed. And one of the things I always like to do is paint the back of my aquariums or at least find what you're going to use, whether it's a, a black cloth or maybe it's a piece of acrylic you're going to buy or uh, even a black trash bag looks really good once you tape it up there and then you it'll look terrible until you fill it with water. Once you fill it in water, you're gonna go, wow, that's good. It blacks out everything, it hides all the cords, hides the filter, hides everything you're gonna have back there. You're not gonna get shadows on the wall. And that's one of the main reasons we wanna put a background. Even if we don't like it or we don't care about it, we don't wanna create all the shadows on the wall. So what's gonna happen there is, <clears throat> like we have a bunch of light coming from behind us and it's creating a shadow behind me on the tank 
It's also going to create a shadow on the wall, and typically we use light colored walls, white and beiges and tans, and that looks like a big fish on the wall. It makes all your fish hide. You can also make them run into things, and so when you put black back there, all that shadow hits the black and just gets absorbed. So it kind of eliminates that problem. One of the reasons why black is better than blue, uh, blue also shows algae, which I'm not a huge fan of. I myself thought, oh, I'd run five tanks in the store that were blue background so I could hold, show off black fish. I were, will never do it again. It grows, it doesn't grow more algae. It just shows the algae so much worse. And the black fish don't even look that much better against it. So my advice is always go with a darker color. It doesn't necessarily have to be black but I wouldn't do um, blue. And I actually think green should be way more popular than blue is, but you know, a lot of people like that ocean look and that would be that deep ocean blue that is very common in saltwater tanks. So um, what else do I have here? The back strip. So when we're talking about glass tops, a lot of times they're gonna come with a back strip and that's just a piece of plastic that is made to go on the back of the aquarium on the top. And that's meant to be customized. So you cut holes in it for maybe uh, maybe your canister filter, which if you watched the last, last episode, don't start with a canister filter unless you really think you're going to love one. Don't let the internet talk you into that. Uh, could also be for your hang on back. Uh, also for uh, any airline tubes or um, heater cords, power head cords, all that. And the reason we have that back strip there is we can't put glass because we got to modify and put stuff there but we also don't want stuff to jump out. We don't want our heat getting out. So uh, cut it pretty tightly so that fish can't jump out and you'll be happy. The other thing uh, which making me think of that tight fitting lid, a lot of times people are worried if that lid fits too tightly that uh, no air exchange will happen. Well, that's just not true. Basically, each day we're opening the lid to feed the fish. There's going to be a huge air exchange right there. If you're running any air stone, which I highly recommend, uh, go at, you know, that's gonna be no problem as you pump the air in it has to leave and there's always going to be these You know cracks where stuff can leave that being said We don't want it to be huge opening so that uh, water evaporation is happening and you know heat's escaping which that's a double whammy by the way without having a top you get heat leaving but then you also get evaporation and evaporation leads to evaporative cooling basically by water evaporating it cools water and so that's one of the reasons uh, we'll use a fan on a tank to cool the water down. So you get a double whammy there of evaporative cooling, plus not trapping heat, your heater working extra hard, and you get all these things going on. You're just like fighting so many elements when it could be a lot easier. So that's why I'm a big proponent of glass top. All my tanks run them, and I'm always looking on how can I get, even on the working tanks, like, oh, I really would like to have more of it covered. The more I can get covered, the better it is. So, yeah. I know I've, I've got to have some questions rolling and I'm going to hit some of the super chats and uh, we'll see what we can do here. Let me find the right screen. Oh, ice cream fund. Okay, well, that's right. At Aqua Shell, we took out a bunch of people for ice cream. So, thank you for donating to that. Um, Chihuahua toys and treats. Yes, my dogs do get spoiled quite a bit. All right, so with nothing in the super chats, We'll see if anyone's got some crazy questions about kind of some decisions at the beginning there. Um, as far as filtration goes, I, 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 recommend, I, I recommend a hang on bag. That's my, my basic filter. If no one's ever kept an aquarium before, hang on back because it typically is a little bit quieter than a sponge filter. You don't need to know about a check valve. You, there's all these things you don't need. It's kind of just like, I just put water in, I plug it in. Like most people can handle that. And then from there, they can kind of hot rod it and adapt and that kind of stuff. I I definitely, in my own store, I will set people up with sponge filters because I see them all in our tanks and I can kind of understand it. But if you don't have that luxury, then it's a little bit weird. Um, you know, believe it or not, we have people asking us, they email us how to set up a sponge filter. Even though it's very simple, you're just attaching a piece of airline tubing, which I happen to have one right here. That'll work. I don't have any airline tubing, but I have this. So all you have to do is attach the airline tubing to this little nipple right here. And then there's an uplift tube like that. And when the air rises up, it would be doing its thing. So very easy, but new Aquarius and stuff, they really don't want to mess up, right? Because they don't want to have a chance at flooding their house or breaking something, set it up incorrectly, having fish die. So 
there's a lot of worrisome going there, and I find that I like a hang on back, which I don't think I have any opened in this room. Uh, you can kind of see it, and it really makes sense. You're like, oh, here's a cartridge, or, you know, just a piece of sponge. I put water in there, and like, all right, I just plug it in. Like, that's kind of the thing. Like, like okay, I've hung it. It's full of water. I plug it. Oh, it's working. It's working. You know, kind of one of those things. Like, okay, I did it. So those those easy first wins are very important to a new hobbyist. The more, like, challenging or just things that are like, this is too difficult, uh, the more likely I are to just return it all and say, ah, it's not for me. So, all right, dollar a gallon sale. Well, I will just tackle questions as we see them. So I guess I'm gonna go into some rants because that's what I like to do. So while I have the sponge filters out, there's a reason I have these. So the aquarium co-op has discontinued, unfortunately, uh, the Hydro Sponge 3. So, as you know, I've been a big proponent of this filter for many, many years. I've used them for over 10 years, and the company is currently for sale, right? So, if you've been following us for a while now, you'll know that we've been looking to manufacture sponge filters, and people have asked us, why aren't we buying this company, and that kind of stuff. And one, I didn't have to want to, I don't want to have to, I physically don't want to have to manufacture them. So I don't want to have to like hire the crew, learn the process, what's the quality control process look like, all these things, right? And so now this is the perfect example of what I didn't want to get into. And unfortunately, I, I get to explain why we're not carrying them anymore. So we ordered probably, um, I think we ordered a couple hundred of these and like, seven out of ten basically so seventy percent all came in with these cracked bottoms and if i get there you go so you see those cracks there's that one and then there's this one now there's metal inside there and they're gonna rust long term it won't be harmful on your aquarium in my experience never been harmful and if you use a sponge filter for a very long time on a bare bottom tank they typically vibrate and will break through anyway you know ten years into it but the fact that this is brand new, brand new like this is not good. And when I emailed my wholesaler, they told us that, oh, we're having problems with the manufacturer making it good on our end. You need to, ma you need to message them directly. And that was kind of the kiss of death for me because it was like, that's the only reason to use a wholesaler is for them to be the middleman between the manufacturer and me. Once you say basically, I can't do anything to help you. What reason is there to ever for me to buy from you again and pay the markup that I'm paying and not buying from the manufacturer? That being said, we had worked it out where we could have bought from the manufacturer directly, um, but this is now the second product by Hydro that we have discontinued. We used to have the um, free filter sponge kits they made, but the plastic was breaking too often. Um, so yeah. Someone says I'd send it back. Yeah, except the manufacturer won't take it back. So there, we've got to, we basically, I gave them to employees, anyone that wanted them. And that's what we've been doing. We've been giving them to employees because they are functional. It's just these bases. I can't willingly, knowingly charge someone for this. And so, yeah, the, the, the wholesaler basically passed the buck on to us going, yeah, they're not going to refund us. And so we're not going to refund you. That conversation was real easy. Like, great, not buying anymore. Yep. I was only buying like one item from them anyway, so it's basically like you just lost us a customer. Like, had we done anything here to resolve this? And what I find amazing to me is that this is going to be the downfall of that company. Like, clearly they don't care. They're trying to sell the company. The wholesaler doesn't care. Like, this product is, I think, going to cease to exist. This is what typically happens: is quality control goes down. Someone's gonna buy it, then they're gonna realize that um, that there's a problem with a mold or the plastic they were using, they gotta develop a new recipe or something, and then it'll be too expensive, and then someone will be have been bamboozled with that company and just run into that. And that's that's what I don't wanna run into. I don't wanna run into like, oh, now I have to become a plastics expert on um, how to mold plastic so that it won't crack or is it a drying thing? Was the humidity off in the room while they were drying it? Like there's so many factors that goes into when you're producing stuff that I just don't wanna, 
I don't want to have to master that. So that's why we didn't buy a company. One, it was expensive too. And uh, yeah, someone's saying sell it, sell the crack sponge for half the cost. That's, it's just not a good idea. That's like a brand new car dealership selling cars that are already wrecked, you know, and like crash, like, well, they're half off. It's just like, it's not a good idea because one, we'll never be able to know anyone who has a cracked one. Let's say it cracked 25 days after we sold it we would want to refund them and that type of thing. And in general, it's just not a good idea to sell, well, I believe it's not a good idea to sell defective products when you when you build your brand on integrity and making it right the first time, you know, like we really, we really want to just sell high quality products. And the minute like you sell ones that aren't, then there's a whole bunch of extra questions that end up coming like, oh, I didn't think it was gonna be this, cracked oh i didn't think it was gonna do this oh is it gonna be safe is it is it is it and the reality is there's a bunch of people who will never read the description and they'll just go oh it's half the price and then they'll just buy it they won't read the description and then they're gonna be angry that they got a product that wasn't perfect and so we just don't want to stress candy out with all those emails and that kind of stuff and it's just not worth it, unfortunately. So we gave him away to employees and that kind of stuff. We thought about bringing him to like Aquashella and giving him away. Again, many people at Aquashella didn't even know who we were. So we didn't want to, you know, start out the transaction with like, hey, you want some broken stuff? Here you go. You know, like that doesn't make us look very good either. So, yeah. So that's where it is. And, uh, you know, we were checking everyone before we sent it out. So no one should have gotten sent one. Also... You know, they came in these boxes for half of them because they were running out. Because So here, this literally this literally happened was we ordered the ones usually don't have a box because the box just takes up more room in shipping. We don't want that. And they were out of those. So then we go, okay, great. We'll take like 200 of the ones in the box. We'll pay a little bit more money. And then they tell us like, well, the reason we didn't have the other ones because they were all cracked. And it's like, and you didn't check any ones in the box. Oh, thanks. You know, it's like one of those, like, how can I keep dealing with these companies? There are definitely some rage sessions going on. And, uh, you know, I don't know to, I don't know how to tell companies other than get it together. Like, I, I try to get our company together every day. Every day I'm like, how can we just not screw up as much as other people? That's really the mantra is like, you know, we're never going to be perfect, but we just got to make sure we're screwing up the least amount possible. So... Are the sponge filters that are on the site still all good or are those that one? No. So the minute we found this was a problem, we went through all of them and removed all the ones that were cracked from inventory. Now, I can't say for sure there wouldn't be one that would be missed, but if that was to happen, we would refund your money without with no questions asked, right? So there's only like five left in inventory, and once those sell, we're just going to remove them from inventory. We're still working on our own sponge filters. It's probably going to be a six-month delay or whatever, but... It's not worth seven out of 10 being broken. You know, like that's just not, not okay. So yeah. Peck only does 29s now. Above 29 is half off a uh, dollar per gallon. Yes, but it's still so cheap it doesn't matter. Like, so I know that we bought a 40 gallon breeder because one of ours was leaking in the warehouse and Joel drilled it and replaced it. We paid 59.99 with tax. My wholesale cost from my distributor on a 40 breeder is $92. So in the, in, the, in the scheme of things, tanks are the cheapest thing we buy anyway. Shall we move? To, let's, let's take a little vote. We can go to next rant or new product. Uh, so one, if you want new product, or two, if you want to rant. We're going to do both, but what do you want next? You want like a... Let's do some positive and then rant or just keep on the rant train here. What do I got? I've got, oh, did I lose it? Oh, no, right here. Oh, I've got two new products, two new products. So we actually can vary it up here with the, don't look, don't look with the rants. Oh, and then I got to get these ready. All right. That's hilarious that it's like, uh, that it's like hiding all those. Is that is it working now? Nope. Oh, I think finally they might have fixed it, by the way. One of the best perks. I see it happening right here. So David Rice was able to put the number two in a few times in a row. One of the best perks, and it looks like they fixed it, of being a member, which that's that green name, 
is that you're not held back by um, <clears throat> you're not held back by the 60 second timer, right? So it is spamming at this point and freaking out, but uh, yes. So one was a rant, two was a new product. Is that what it was? I think that was. I'm seeing. Ooh, it's it's about 50 50. How many people we got watching? Hit that like button if you haven't hit it already. 14.59. Wow, this is nothing close to the record. I thought we were going to try for a record today. Everyone in chat, which we had over like 150 people in the chat earlier today, uh, we were talking records. So maybe it's because people aren't used to it because I've been gone for a couple of weeks. You know how that goes. A rant on a new product? I could probably do that too. That's That's not even unheard of. I do. Randy gets the rants on the new products of like, why can't they just do this right? Um, no, we're going to go with this one. This little humdinger right here. This I'm excited about. You might have seen it on the community page, which if you're not following the community page, you might want to. Um, this is our USB nano air pump. If I can open it. So. What is this, you ask? This is a silent air pump. And you'll see a video on it someday in the future when I'm free. This runs, ooh, I could probably plug it in right now. And then I'll hold it up to the microphone. This might work, this might work. This is either gonna sound horrible or not. Let me plug this thing in. It's gonna sound louder because there's no uh, airline tubing on it. Okay, it's on. See, I had to check to make sure it was on. I don't know if it's, is this even picking it up? My microphone will not pick it up. So even though I'm holding it like right at the microphone here. Anyway, so this thing, I fell in love with it. It runs on USB, right? And it's got this little carbine clip so you can hang it. So by hanging it, it makes sure that it's never gonna rattle. And even if you didn't hang it and you set it on something, this is a rubberized, I don't know, it's a case. I can't think of something better. Uh, and it runs very, very low electricity. So it's not a super powerful air pump, but because it runs on USB, oh, they can hear it, okay, good. Uh, because it runs on USB, you can run it in your car. You can uh, plug it in, like we, we sell it. We had to have this included. Uh, you can run on the little adapter, so you can just plug it in, right in a normal fish tank. And really, it's really good for like bettas, traveling, power outages, because you can hook it up to a battery pack, which I don't have in here, of course. That would have been way too good if I was ready. Um, you can also use it in hotel rooms. I thought about bringing some of these with me when I go to some conventions if I'm going to buy fish, and because they're super small. And that's one thing I don't have on the website, how long the cord is. looks like three feet. But um, the fact that you can... Just clip it to stuff like on the edge of a bucket, which again, I don't even have a bucket, but you can clip it on the edge of the bucket and let it go down and just uh, aerate all the water, which, you know, Dean was using these. If you watch Jimmy's video on one of the draft cats, I sent some of these to, we're going to use them while we collect. So when I go to Peru, we're going to use them. When I go back to Florida, we're going to use them. So all these little things. And what I really want to do, again, I don't have the right product. It'll be for a video, is the battery powered, um, banks that also have the plug-in it'll run for like a day or two uh once the power goes out automatically and i'll show you guys all about that and and they're only like seven or eight bucks so they're super cheap we kept the price down as low as we could and uh but they're they're going to be amazing for quiet spaces that need oxygen they're not going to run a super big sponge filter they won't run a zis filter and by won't run a zis filter i did test it on a well-established zis filter it will technically keep it going. That being said, I would not run it full time and I'm not going to I'm not going to advertise as that cuz the minute someone buys one of these and uh puts it on there going to be like it's barely going. You know, yes, this is meant to be ultra quiet. It uses that ultrasonic technology and it's meant to use very low power so that you can run it off battery packs and all that kind of stuff and yeah. And I like the fact that it hangs. I've, I've been running them for quite a while. Had one on my desk for many months now. Had one uh, running in tanks. And it will run a very small sponge filter. And we'll do a whole video down the road about all that kind of stuff. But yeah, I love how quiet it is. 
that was a big thing because a lot of you know a lot of people say air pumps are are noisy but they're all relative right like bigger engine more sound less engine less sound and so this one is less engine but way less sound so uh and we did have the choice and i th i felt we couldn't sell it without including a usb adapter um kind of randy was like but everyone's got a million of those things and i was like yes but if you don't you're gonna be sad you don't have these and so i i because we were getting them um included and the manufacturer made these as well they didn't add that much they only added like 50 cents maybe to the total price like maybe less than that right so and it fit in the same bag and all those types of things so yeah we've only you know we only brought in a few hundred of them so get them while you can get them i mean we'll probably carry them forever but that's all we've got right now and yeah all right rant number two new product off the side let me let me let me fuel up for this rant Ooh, drip loop let me i'll fuel up and talk about the drip loop So in theory, you will not need a drip loop. Well, a drip loop with with a wire, you always need one. But what I was going to say is the best part about this is because you can hang it just off like a little thumbtack or anything by your aquarium or set it on the top of your aquarium, you don't have to use a check valve. So that's what I super like about this thing too. It saves you a little bit of money that way too. All right, back to Rantathon. It's kind of an unboxing, and I say it's kind of because I didn't open the box. It got opened at work, and everyone collectively was just like, what is this? And I was like, I don't know what that is. So you can open it with me. This box right here. Nice and dirty. This box is brought to you by uh, Rolf C. Hagen, a.k.a. Fluval. Fluval sent us something. You might ask, what has Fluval sent us? We've been saying they've been tripping forever, right? Our, our answers must, or our prayers must have been answered. What have they sent us today? Ah, they sent us one AquaClear 30. Yeah. Huh. All right. And then as someone pointed out from my crew, isn't that like the Petco version? Because it's the Fluval and the AquaClear isn't small. And I was like, yes. Yes, that is actually. And how do I know? Because I'm a guy that already has Fluval filters sitting on his desk from the last shows that I've done. Huh. Yeah. So it's old stock. And then you, yeah, it is dented. Yes, my wife is saying it's dented. If you can see right here, it's already been, it's already taken a beating. So they sent me a beaten down Fluval 30 that is extra dusty. Oh, wait, let me get that glare off there so you can see. Yes. Yeah, look at that dirt. You like that dirt? I'm glad they could dust off the warehouse and uh, send me an out of print, beat up, maybe broken filter. And uh, so let me just tell you, Fluval's been reaching out to a lot of the influencers, sending them stuff to uh, promote their brand. So clearly, the marketing team at Fluval is watching very closely what the Aquarium Co-op does and thought, you know, our number one salesman in the United States could sure use the Petco Aqua clear, it's not even the aqua clear, Fluval 30, so he could tell his people. Yeah. This comes after a meeting of meeting with them at Global Pet Expo, and basically hitting them with lots of WTFs. What is going on here? This is a train wreck. And, uh, so yeah. Don't know what I'm going to do with this dirty, possibly broken, out of print filter, but. This is what you can expect when you hit, when you close in on the 300,000, the 300,000 mark, you too could get an out of print, possibly broken, definitely dirty filter from Fluval. Only if you spend a ridiculous amount. Well, I don't think you have to spend a ridiculous amount of money. I think anyone's getting this. So if you're an influencer, there you go. 
free is still free. It's actually not free, Scott, because I probably had to get three different employees trying to figure out why we even got this and is there an invoice? Should it go into inventory? So at this point, it has actually cost me money. So yes, we had a lot of conversations while we were in in uh, Florida with the companies, which I don't think we've been live since uh, since we've been there. And I gotta say, didn't go so well with a lot of them. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, people that just, you know, don't want to do good business, I guess. Yeah. So, I'm not going to name the companies yet because they haven't fully buried themselves yet. They're basically almost there. I need to make sure that they, uh, you know, that they have fully walked off the cliff and then I can be like, yes, they literally don't care about us. So not naming anyone yet, but that being said, what blows my mind is talks went well with Fluval, right? Fluval talks went well. And yet then this, I don't get it, but you know, and that's, that's kind of the weird thing is I feel like these big companies, all the departments are just not talking to each other. Like, that's the only way I can explain this kind of crap happening is why would you also like other companies found, I find it hilarious that other chemical companies sent stuff to another chemical company to their influencers without even knowing it. So basically API sent some stuff to Jay Wilson who works for Fritz Aquatics for him to review but he works for Fritz, Aqu Fritz Aquatics. Like the level of which the research is being done here and attention to detail is just not around. Like that, that would be like me sending Dustin's fish tanks and H2O plants. Some of my plants be like, could you review these for me on your channel? Like that's the same thing. Like that's never going to happen. Yeah. That being said, what else? Global Pet Expo. The new product scene, super let down. The only thing that was even remotely cool was the Aquanel. Well, I say Aquanel. Cobalt uh, is bringing the Wi-Fi canister filter to the U.S. market. And unfortunately, fortunately, Cobalt's doing it. <laughs> <coughs> if anyone but Cobalt was doing it, I'd probably be excited. But Cobalt has a track record with electronics of just sucking. Like, they had problems with their Neotherm, well not Neotherm, Neotherm that was a second heater. Their, their high-end heater, they had a problem with that. Their UV sterilizer sucked, didn't work at all. Their cancer filter, in my opinion, was not good. Uh, yeah, they got a track record with electronics of not doing well. And so now I'm afraid of like, dang it, I was super excited for this. And Aquanel was already partnered with Cobalt making their heaters. So this is just like one of those like, dang it, yep, they did partner up with them. I don't hold much hope. It's going to be a billion dollars and the customer support is going to be terrible and all that. But yes, so if you go back to the China videos where we were at SIPS, Chinese International Pet Show, I featured this filter. I met the Aquanel people. They designed it. Wi-Fi cans filter has pre-filter built in, has all these cool things. And then like they partnered with the devil basically like, uh, not again. So I hope I'm wrong. I hope that quality control is like super high. I hope it's affordable. I hope, you know, all those things are good, but track record doesn't lend itself well to that. And so, you know, we'll see how it goes. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Fritz Aquatics, is that a spinoff of Universal Rocks? No. Uh, Jay Wilson no longer works for Universal Rocks, to the best of my knowledge, and just works for you, for Fritz at this moment. So, uh, let's see here. So what are, the, what are examples of them not doing good business? Is it simply them not willing to budge on their margins and give you a better deal? Or because they don't value enough? Well... So in my opinion, this one is 100% factual, so I can say this one is not even up to opinion. I say, uh, company X, we've had four product increases or 
price increases on your products in a year. They do everything short of calling me a liar, saying that would be impossible. No one has ever done that. We haven't even increased our price in over a year. And I go, I guarantee you that is incorrect because we have algorithms in place that notify us when the price goes up. And that's happened four times. They're very, 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 very adamant that is not true and uh, don't even want to really talk about it. So then I go back to the hotel that night and I use, you know, the makeshift office at the hotel. And after like an hour of finally getting logged in and into an account where I can print my invoices, I print the invoices where all the four price increases come back. And magically when we go back the next day, that guy won't come to the table. And of this company, it would be the VP and the guy that's in charge of all of the aquatics division of that company. And I basically just yell at them for an hour and a half straight. And it's not actually yelling, but very stern, I ranting at them. I rant at them for an hour and a half, just like I do here, of like, how could I not be your most beneficial customer here? And what I mean by that is, <clears throat> when you think about who's your ideal customer, it would probably be someone that's spending $30,000 or more every quarter with you, promotes all your products, sells them, is knowledgeable, provides customer service, and each quarter you spend more than you did the quarter before, and each quarter you up my price, right? So I keep laying that out of like, in what way does this make sense that the more I sell of yours, the more I pay? Like traditional business is the opposite. If I sell more of it, really I should be spending less, not spending more. So it's like I'm getting penalized every time we sell more, they raise the price, right? And so this is kind of called the aquarium co-op effect where this has happened to us before where we start selling a product so well that production has a hard time keeping up with it. So they start raising the price. And so that's just not a good thing. It's like they're getting all the free publicity and it's not like I, I don't, I don't walk in and just start with like, Hey, I'm aquarium co-op. I should get stuff for free. I'm really advocating for everyone. So my, my platform is if I'm a guy that can market the products and I'm buying a ton of it, and my price is going up, how is that not happening to every mom and pop store around the entire United States? How do you think they feel, right? Because their buy price is going up, they're getting further away from uh, Amazon prices and that kind of stuff too. Like, how is this not a much bigger problem than just us? The fact that I'm sitting here is because yes, we have some clout and all that, but you should take this as like, this is the sign that if you don't fix this, Overall, this is a much, much bigger problem. And so I genuinely believe that the more business you do with someone, you shouldn't be charged more, right? Like if you, if you went to a mechanic every single month and spent $5,000 to fix cars for your business, you wouldn't expect them to go, you know, you keep coming back to us every month and spending $5,000, so we're gonna start charging you 6,000. You would expect the opposite of like, you know what? You're such a good customer. You keep coming back month after month after month. It's only 4,500. Like we're going to cut you a little of a deal. It's the opposite. And that's what's so mind blowing to me. And I, I do consider that a bad business practice of like, the more you spend, the more I charge you. That just like, if anything, you could say, look, the price isn't going down. You've already buying at the lowest possible. That's fine. I get that when that happens, but the price going up is what's insane to me. So that kind of stuff, we were just kind of beating our head against the wall. Uh, we had a talk with Tetra, Marine Land, basically that whole Spectrum brand of like, why won't you get back to us and why can we not sell your products online? We'll adhere to all the minimum advertised prices, that kind of stuff. We just met with them. That was a very nice conversation. And they said, look, we're a giant corporation. This is more about all of the other products that are outside of aquatics, not so much about aquatics. We can take that back to the team. We can kind of start running it through the channel. It's going to take a long time. Maybe at the end of it, we'll be able to allow it. You know, so that kind of stuff went okay. Um, but it is maddening just to like watch some of these companies where you're just watching them be so backwards that you know that they're just not going to make it. So, yeah. So anyway, like, and basically I follow those conversations up with like, you're just forcing me to 
find another person to make this product like someone else in the US or buy someone else. Like I had the same talk with, with Seachem, you know, with Seachem, it was a real nice, honest conversation of like, yeah, we make our own fertilizer. So it doesn't make sense for us to really carry your fertilizer. A lot of your other products are the Aqua Vitro line. They can only be sold in store and not online. So that doesn't make sense. And then we're left with like a few other products and it doesn't make sense for us to really invest in Seachem when you're not willing to invest in us either. And you do sell, you know, one of our big platforms is anyone that's selling directly to Amazon, like we are trying to build the bridge there of like you selling directly to Amazon is hurting every mom and pop store. Like that's just, that is a true statement when they sell. So when, you know, if you're, it would be like aquarium co-op selling directly. Well, no, cause we don't wholesale to other people. Who would it be like? It would be like, uh, I mean, I guess, I don't, I don't know. It would, so, okay. Flewball doesn't do this, but it would be like Flewball selling directly to Amazon at a much lower price than we can ever buy it for. And then it's going, sorry. Yeah. People just buy it from Amazon and not you. Like you just don't get a chance and they don't see that. Um, you know, they don't see that that is a non winning strategy long, long term. So Yeah, it's, we had a lot of long conversations over multiple days. That's the thing. It's like you, you meet one group of people and then you basically have to prove them wrong if they're, cause I, that's the thing is I never go into the fight without like really knowing what I need to convey because you never want to be in the opposite of that of where you're like, you claim all these things and they're not true. You forever lose that credit, right? By the time you finally get to talk to someone at a company that really might care, I have to be factually correct. And if you're not, so that's how I know by the time we're going in and having a talk like that, like these facts are straight up facts on our end. You can claim that you don't know about it or you didn't think that was going on or any of those things, but they are factual on our end. Yeah, you can't ship any Aqua Vitro products. That's why you don't really see them online. Anyone that is selling them online is actually breaking uh, rules with Seachem and they can cut you off. Um, yeah, it's... You know, thanks to Aqua Vitra, that's why we have our own aquarium co-op scissors and tweezers and that kind of stuff. Because even if we wanted to, we couldn't sell theirs online. So, you know, it's those types of things where, and don't get me wrong, Seachem is trying to protect the brick and mortar stores and all those things. So their intentions are correct. I don't want to make it seem like that. But when I have a conversation, I'm like, look, it's just majority of our business is online now. It doesn't make sense, you know. And then I brought up the one time when I bought a bunch of Prime from them. Well, not from them directly, but from a wholesaler. And it was the, the bottle that like is 325 milliliters, right? So you got like 35% more Prime. Well, then we got a cease and desist letter. You're not allowed to sell that online, apparently. No one told us. No one told our wholesaler. And so then we had to send back all this Prime because there's no way we can move that much of it in the store. So it's just stuff like that. Like they are trying to... Um, they are trying to do good things. It just, sometimes the execution is not right or it's not even that it's not right. It just doesn't make sense for our business. And so that's where I'm just like, you know, I don't really have too many bad things to say about their product except for like the CCAM matrix, which is, is pumice, you know, but most of our products are good quality and uh, just don't make a whole lot of sense for us. And then like, you know, CCAM, Purigen, that kind of stuff, when you sell it directly to Amazon, that makes it too brutal for us to compete. So, yeah. Uh, let's see here. Was it not Corey who said if you have to convince a company you're a good customer, then you, then they already don't care about you? Yes, I 100% agree with that. Uh, that it was actually the line was when you go and say, "Do you know how much money I spend with you?" The answer is yes. They already would if you were spending enough. So uh, that being said, in this relationship, and I, I don't want to be like, "Oh, we're different," right? But in this exact situation, it is nearly impossible for that company to know we're spending that much because there's someone in the middle, right? So if I spend, like with Fluval, we buy direct. So if we spend a million dollars with Fluval, they know we spent a million dollars, right? But with, like, oh, this is a good product right here. This hydro sponge, if we buy five, well, we wouldn't, let's say we spend $100,000 on this product this year. The person that makes this product would have zero idea that we bought $100,000 worth. They would only know that the wholesaler we bought from bought $100,000 worth. So 
they don't actually know how much we've spent. So when you're when you're complaining or trying to work with that company, they you have to quantify how much you're actually buying, and that's where I'm showing them purchase orders and that stuff through the the um, through the wholesaler, so that they can quantify in that I'm not someone that like you spent twelve dollars and here you are taking up all of our time. It's like I know. I'm buying out, so with this particular company, we were buying out three different wholesalers every week, every month. We're having supply issues. The price has gone up four times. There's all these things. So like, there's all these problems of keeping their product in stock. And when you're conveying it to the VP of the company, of the at least the aquatics division, and the guys in charge of marketing and all that, you know, you have to... When you make a claim that you're buying out three different wholesalers, and you're, one you're shipping in, two are local, all that stuff, you have to back it up with, we're actually doing that, so that you just don't come off as absolutely insane. Because we, with that company, we are spending so much money that no one else is pretty much spending that much, that to my knowledge. And we come off as crazy until you're like, no, look at these purchase orders, and they're like, wow, yes, those are giant purchase orders for these products, and so then that keeps the conversation moving because um because they don't discount it right off the get go cuz there's a ton of people that walk up and it's like we need a better deal right and <clears throat> i don't even start with we need a better deal i usually start with like we need to not be sold out of your product all the time that's usually where i start is we don't want to be sold out all the time so people are asking me to get to super chats nope not going to happen Never getting those super chats now. Talking about Deep Blue, like Deep Blue Sea. They're not even on the West Coast, so we don't do anything with Deep Blue Sea aquariums. So, yeah. Trying to imagine what 100K of sponge filters would look like. It just looks like people that are buying a lot in an e-commerce business. Like, you just keep buying them all the time. We buy um, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of the various sponge filters every week. We sell quite a few. Like we don't move a hundred K of that one uh, sponge filter, but we do move a lot. So um, yeah, it's one of those weird, weird things. Like again, I don't want to name the actual company that, cause I, I always want to give people a chance to like actually look at it and go, you know, you're right. He is promoting the product. He is selling a ton. He did get four price increases is this what our company wants to be doing to this to our customers? If the answer is yes, like that's everyone's got to make their own business decisions. Like they just might have to be right, and then we have to make our business decisions. So, you know, easy as that. But I want to make sure that that is their stance before. And also, I don't want to make it seem like if they don't give in, I'm going to talk bad about them. Only if it naturally came up in conversation. Like I'm not counting down the days. Like they said no. Now I'm going to flame them. No, but I, I would, I do like to have an open door policy with you guys. And so, um, yeah, I just don't want to interfere with that if I can help it. So, all right. 1627, we're, we're moving on up. We're moving on up when it comes to uh, the amount of people watching. So we do have another new product. Nothing game breaking, if you will. This one right here, it is the Zis Airstone. It is a weighted airstone, so I'm gonna take it apart and play with it because that makes more sense. Because if you want to see a picture, you can look online. So this weighted airstone is going to replace all of our previous weighted airstones. Um, so it is weighted. That means it's heavy. That means when you put it in the water, it's gonna sink. That's good. Uh, this one, it unscrews two pieces, right? And it's got these little felt discs. I don't know if it's actually felt, but they feel like felt to me. And it's got these little spacers in them. There's another little spacer. I don't know if you guys see that. There you go. And based on how much you clamp down, so this is one of the features I like, on how tight you make it, if you just crank that thing down, right? Like, yeah, let's make this super, and I'll, I'll, I'll crank it down a bunch here. So if you make it like this, if it, there you go. Like that, the bubbles are gonna be really fine because you've compressed all the fibers in there, right? But if you make it ah, much more loose, like this, which I realize might be hard to tell the difference, bubbles are gonna be more coarse, less back pressure on the air pump, right? And then it also comes with replacement discs 
But it also, so one, if you like, let this get like crazy dirty somehow. I've, I've been using them for, what was it, like eight or nine months now? Never even had anything, you know, remotely go wrong. But somehow if you did, like if it was in a pond and sitting in gunk, or I, I don't know. I don't know the case in which it would fail, but you did. But it also comes with extra plastic discs that you can add more. You know, if you really wanted to crank some air through there, you can add more, right? And now we've got three in there, three discs going. And so it's got a couple more it comes with, but I think it's more of a packaging thing of like the felt costs almost nothing. If it comes with the replacements, it further enhances the, you're never gonna need to replace that. That being said, People gave me flack were like, oh, it never clogs and it comes with replacements. It's like, well, yes, I'm not going to pay them money to take out extra discs. Like if you ever did actually need one, they do come with it. That being said, I've never needed that. Um, the, one, the one time I can actually think that you might need it is if you were a smoker and you're pumping the air through and you don't run carbon on the intake of your air pump, which I should probably make a video on that, but... Uh, it will get filled up with like nicotine and that kind of stuff because of uh, you're pumping the air through this. It would pick up any like, um, yes, I don't want to call it airborne stuff, I guess. Eventually you could like fill up with, I don't want to call it tar, but just stuff. And these are $1.99 and I just like them. They're also not multicolored anymore. That was one of the big complaints for people was it like, oh, I don't need the multicolored one. We got it made just in black, so black, blue, and clear. You know, much more, um, looks much nicer on the eyes. And so, yeah, we're just going to go with those from now on. All right. I suppose now I could chime into the Super Chats. So I, I, I should fault myself. I decided that Nightbot didn't have to re remind everyone that um, Super Chats wouldn't be answered guaranteed. But apparently I was wrong. You know, I thought like, oh, I've been spamming these people for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks on end that Super Chats may never be answered at all or will be answered when they are gotten to. But I guess I'll turn that on for next week. All right, what do we got? I've been having problems with flu while myself. My Spec 16, the light can't be used on a timer and they are giving you the runaround. I don't know what to tell you about that. I, I don't carry the Spec 16s. Um, so mine it must have a touch button that doesn't auto turn on i guess with a timer yeah i don't know my my advice would be so this is me personally i feel like you would return that to the place you bought it like if someone was to buy that from me and then there's a problem you basically have two avenues right you have one take it to flu ball and if they won't do anything about it you take it back to where you bought it that's how we deal with it like typically we would just take it back first because we don't make people go deal with the manufacturer but on some products we have to, like Phoenix products we have to, um, but you should, I mean, a company should take that back. Which by the way, I find that to be a glaring problem. If, like if you can't hook up the canister filter to, canister filter, what am I talking about? If you can't hook up the light to a timer, I think already you're like, your light is doomed out of the box, so. That should be guaranteed. All right, David Gilkinson playing a 120 tank with with a sump and CO2. Thanks for answering the auto sump water change question earlier. Any sump tips from your 800 gallon experience? Not really. I mean, sumps just hold water and uh, they can be as kind of dirty or as tidy as you want when it comes to plumbing. And it's a good place to have fun. So do yourself like build yourself a DIY CO2 reactor. How hot is it in here? 80? Getting hot. My my face is hot. Too ranty in here. But plumb yourself a reactor, maybe some fine polishing pads, that kind of stuff. But you know, sumps really aren't magical. They're just kind of a spot to hold stuff. So uh, the fish tank barn says, "Smash that like button." That's right. I was gonna smash a button on here, but that would probably like end the stream. So I'm not doing that. Is there such a thing as too much beginner plants to cover the back of a tank on a 75 gallon? I really don't want to paint it. Is there such a thing as uh, too much beginner plants to cover the back? Not really. I mean, if you really had it filled in, that's just kind of the Dutch aquascaping method. So 
you can run into some problems where lighting's having a hard time and you can get some death down below. Like all your stem plants, they might get real thin through the bottom. But I don't think there's really that much of a, of a, like a problem. Yeah. So you really don't want to paint it. One of the things you can do is you can get um, foam board. You know, like when you're a kid and you had to do presentations and stuff, you can go buy like that foam board and you kind of put that back there. It's kind of rigid enough. If you have a hang on back, you just kind of move the hang on back, slide it in, and the hang on back will hold it there for you. So, yeah, I mean, I get it. Tearing down a tank and painting it, that's exactly why I said do that before you set up the tank, all that stuff earlier in the live stream. But there are ways to improve the look uh, post setup. And I'm going to be doing that on the 800 gallon on one of the sides. I'm going to buy this like a uh, real thin, like plasticky material. I don't have anything that's close to it. Otherwise, I'd be like, it's like this. But it's, I don't have anything nearly close. But it's everything. It's uh, Dean uses it on all his tanks. So, and I've been a fan of it. Uh, let's see. In New York. Oh, new members. There's new members all over the place. We got Roy Sterner. Brandon O'Dell, Rena Marr, thank you. Oh, and we have Soft Embrace French, Gab Roy, Jason uh, Nothelfer, 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 I don't know. Uh, David Beckard, thank you, thank you. And Christina Vu Vuanu, about Vuanu. I think people just joined to become members to watch me try and pronounce her name. Yeah. Uh, thank you for becoming a member. That gets you special icons you can use. You get a green uh, name, you get little loyalty icons. So like if you've been for six months, you get a different puffer than when you're just a week old. Um, you also aren't, you shouldn't be limited by the chat anymore, which that was a bug for a while. And then it, it looks like it's fixed again. So um, yeah, kind of, a, you know, five bucks a month. If you were going to super chat anyway, I just think it's a, a good way to spend some of that money. In New York City, Petland went out of business. Maybe they just wrapped them up Maybe they just wrapped them up with their name. Petland? Maybe they just wrapped them up with their name. Yeah, I don't know. I've never been to a Petland, so I don't know. I, I, but I get the vibe that it was the same level as like a PetSmart, Petco type of chain. But how do I nuke a tank? Will your med trio work? So when it comes to nuking a tank, that would mean like reset. Like there's something that killed everything in there and... We need to like alter reset. Me personally, I would use a ton of salt, like way more than is needed. Like if it's 10 gallons, like several pounds, let that sit for three or four days, then water change it out. And then let that sit for like a day and water change once more. And that much salt will kill most things. So that's what I do because then I know it dissolves back into water and it doesn't leave residue and things like that. So that's my own personal nuke, if you will. Uh, Lynn places first his or her first order. Valisteri is incoming. You got me into aquariums through random unboxing video. Oh, thank you for making my life much happier. Well, you make my life happier too. As you guys buy stuff, life gets a little bit easier. We are getting very close. We hired so a lot of things went on in the last two weeks. Like I can't believe, like even Randy admitted, I can't believe how much we pull off in a short amount of time. In the last two weeks. We did Aquashella, we did a week in Florida, we collected in Florida, we did all those things. We also, um, I guess I could announce that, I don't think I ever announced it. Um, all of our full-time employees make at least $17 an hour now. We got very good health insurance, dental, vision, um, uh, disability insurance, life insurance for everyone in the company that wanted it, all that stuff. So yeah, $17 an hour was our new starting base rate for anyone that's full time. And then uh, we also hired on two people last week. One is starting full time this week. One starts in like two weeks. So we have two new full time people for the warehouse to help keep up. And all of that is in culmination to the big goal we've got going on is to free me up. So all I do is make videos and do our advertising and go travel the world and develop products and all that kind of stuff. So um, yes, we've got a few more weeks, like, uh, Randy's going to have a baby, so he's going to be out of commission, but we are setting up everything so that we can just put kind of the pedal down on the gas again for videos and traveling and doing all that kind of stuff, which I'm excited for because it is stressful, uh, having stuff build up. Like I landed back Sunday night 
and I have not been able to look at a single thing we shot for the past two weeks yet. Tomorrow will be the first day. I've got to go pick up plants and stuff. But tomorrow afternoon will be the first time I will have had to do any social media in a meaningful way. And so I get antsy being out of pocket. Basically, I've been out of pocket for two and a half weeks at this point. Haven't uploaded a single video. Like we had videos uploaded and there's more to come. Don't worry. But limited comments that I've been replying to, limited stuff on the community page, limited stuff on Instagram, all that kind of stuff. We haven't, like I still have to test our test strips that we're working on and all that kind of stuff. So I'm really hoping to catch up in the next couple of days. So there's blog posts that need to go up that I just have to format and get them up. So look for those, all that kind of stuff. So, um, but a lot of big things going on and we're, I'm very excited. I'm very proud and excited that <clears throat> in my opinion, I feel like with the addition of, uh, so I think I'm illegally allowed to say it with healthcare. You know, if you're looking for a job, we're not exactly hiring right now, but maybe camp out a spot at the aquarium co-op. $17 an hour to begin, and then we're paying 75% of the gold tier of insurance for all the employees, and then 25% of every dependent. So that's a spouse and every kid you have. So we're trying to make it so that it is a desirable, like people really want to work there and are paid well. And I, I feel like we all, we've always given pay raises and that kind of stuff pretty liberally and, and advanced people, but uh, the health insurance thing was we were running into some snafus of our, our workforce was young and we didn't have quite enough people to like start an account. But now that we do, it's going to work and all that. So, um, yeah, it's a lot of little technical logistical things going down, but hopefully it's going to all smooth out into like, yeah, back to, back to normal. So it's, so if you don't know, if you follow the Swisky vision channel, Jimmy's channel, I think it's actually just Swisky now. It's not even Swisky Vision. But if you follow Jimmy's channel, you'll know that it was two and a half weeks since he released a video, right? Well, that's because he was working in the warehouse four out of five days. One day a week, he'd edit some videos because we had to keep putting videos out. Four out of five days, he was working in the warehouse to ship orders because we were, were just getting that busy and we had to hire people on. My wife was the same way, basically working five or six days a week. I had to travel, Randy had to travel, then I had to travel again, and then and then Jimmy traveled with me. And so we've hired two full-time people on. So in theory, my wife can also be at home a little bit and Jimmy can help edit now or not help edit, but he can do his, his normal job instead of doing this other job. And so we should settle back into, so even his channel, you'll probably see more videos coming out of him and that kind of stuff. Cause he's not, it's, it's hard working in the warehouse. You come, come home, you're tired, your feet hurt, you know, maybe not feet hurt, but like you definitely work hard and yeah. So thank you to everyone that was putting in long hours and that kind of stuff at my, at my, our business. I don't want to call it my business, our business. <clears throat> All right. Why you use a filter if you do big water changes and gravel vac one to two times a month? Because filters are basically sweep poop and food aside, but doesn't remove it and still creates ammonia. That's all factual. Yes. Um, the goal of a filter is mostly to remove physical debris from the water, so cloudy water, and then uh, convert ammonia into nitrate, which is less toxic. But you are completely correct that if we were to balance a certain way, we wouldn't need any filtration. That is a true statement, yeah. Ginger Grave says, thanks for your advice. My local fish store is going to give me store credit for my Shelly fry once they grow out. Perfect. Yes, I would hope that at, at a sellable size, you can get four or five bucks a piece. I don't know what Shelly's they are. I don't know. Like it's also, if you want to bring them 80 and they're only going to sell 10, like there's all that whole dynamic, but Shelly's should pay a uh, decent as well. You know, take YouTube's free money. I will take YouTube's free money. It's not exactly free though. Like truth be told, I mean, I haven't seen the stats at the end of this year yet, but last year we definitely ran at a negative between Jimmy's salary uh, flying around, we gave away $15,000 retail value of Easy Green at Aquashella. We paid, so at Aquashella, you know, I am going to see if they want to cover it. So Aquashella went really well, and they, um, they sold out on Saturday and all that kind of stuff. But that being said, they gave us a free booth. So they had some extra booths that weren't being utilized. So like, I could set up a booth, and then I'll bring a bunch of Easy Green to give away. So, but we did fly, or we did pay for our own... I paid for Jimmy and I's flight. 
paid for our hotel, paid for our car, all that kind of stuff. But, you know, I, they were willing to pay for me. And I said, put all that money towards other creators and that kind of stuff that can't, that aren't supported as much as like you guys support us a lot. And, uh, and I said, if you sell out or if you make a lot of money, then I'll submit. That makes sense, you know. And so I think I'm going to submit and be like, hopefully you guys are profitable considering we had to turn people away on Saturday. And we'll, we'll roll that money back up into uh, the next event. Because that event between plane tickets and hotel, it basically was like 2500 bucks for Jimmy and I for plane tickets, hotel, and car. And then we gave away... Fifteen thousand dollars retail in uh, Easy Green, so you know that's quite an expensive of a weekend for us as a business, and so that's why we end up running kind of at a loss. Is we take all that YouTube money and we basically throw it right back out and reinvest it into let's get a thousand people using Easy Green, and maybe a third of them are brand new, and maybe they'll like it, maybe they'll tell others, and then maybe we'll sell more Easy Green, and maybe we'll be able to do a bigger thing down the road, and so yeah. We will take YouTube's free money. Uh, Brian's Aquariums, great meeting you at Aquashella. Yes, Aquashella was a long weekend for me. Those of you that saw me know that there was a line the entire time. And uh, I learned a lot. And we're going to see what we can do. I'm going to try and fly my wife out to these events so she can help keep me fed because it was that was a problem. And we want to find a way to entertain people that are in line. We I shouldn't say we. I feel bad that someone might have to wait 40 minutes to shake my hand, ask me a couple of questions, get a signature and that kind of stuff. And so I want to figure out what can we do to make the line better? You know, is there, you know, Jimmy's talking to people, my wife's talking to people. Are we giving away some extra freebies? Do we have a cookie to give you? Like we probably get into permitting issues with a cookie or the venue won't let us give away food or something. I don't know. But I want to try and make that experience better for you guys. So I'm working on that. That's in the brain going... If I'm going to, like, because it's only going to get worse, right? As we get to 300,000 or 500,000, whatever, like, more and more people are going to show up to events. How do we make that not be horrible? Got to figure it out. Make the move, make the line move faster. I also don't, as I was telling people in line, I don't want to be like, here's my signature next, next, next. Like, I do want a few minutes with each of you because um, I enjoy that time. So, yeah. By the way, I haven't asked in a long time, and I feel like I should, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, and I was looking at analytics while I was on the plane, 65% of all the views on this channel come from people that have never subscribed to the channel. 65%, more than half of you have never subscribed to the channel. So do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. Maybe you got to look up your password and go, oh, geez, I don't even remember how to log into Google, to log into YouTube. But if you could, subscribe. Because that does matter. It does matter when you say, I almost have 300,000 subscribers. We should make this product better. Like, I know that when we have eventually have a million, like, manufacturing stuff will hear the word million and be like, wow, that's a lot. So, 300,000 sounds like, yeah, that's some, but that a million is just that whole next echelon. I, I realize we're very far away from a million, but uh, I haven't asked people to hit that subscribe button and probably a year so if you do me a favor hit that subscribe button uh it would help all right big texas tanks i haven't seen you in a long time buddy yeah just got here a little off topic i'll catch the replay ideas for a live bears to breed with l260 uh queen plecos um which is the queen arabesque by the way at 84 degrees last order came in great i would do well, you're not going to want to be super hard water. I would try Endlers because I love those. I would also try Hedorander Formosa. And the reason I'm recommending these small live bears is they won't prey on any fry if you're going to breed them. I don't know if you're, yeah, live bears to breed. I don't know if you just have one of those plecos or you're trying to breed those plecos also. Um, guppies can handle 84, but realize their life cycle is going to be shorter. And... Yeah, I wouldn't go with swords and mollies. You could maybe do platies at that temp, like, but you're on the upper echelon of their their heat. So yeah. What do I know about deep sand beds and freshwater tanks? Um, they are useful. They're kind of just they they harbor denitrifying bacteria. You can run them as a plenum. You can run them in sumps. Really, you want to make sure that you never gravel vac them. 
You never have fish that'll dig, so that's why you want to run a sump typically, and they will digest nitrates. That being said, I think why they've never become super popular in freshwater tanks is plants kind of serve the same function and are a lot easier and provide quicker results. So what I mean by that is a plant might start growing in a week. A deep sand bed usually takes six months or more to establish, and because of that, they've never really become super popular like they did in salt water. So, yeah. Uh, best tank mates for a 10-gallon plant tank with cherry shrimp colony, 8.2 pH. Uh, I would keep guppies or endlers live bearers. If you look up the breeding fish for profit series, that is one grouping I do. Basically, cherry shrimp and guppies or endlers. And you can breed a bunch of them that cohabitate well in my experience. Like all my shrimp tanks basically run guppies. And I really enjoy that combo. So will I eat a few shrimp? Yes, but they'll still make more than you ever need. Jennifer says, thank you for being an ethical employer. Much respect. Well, if I'm being 100% honest, one, it has been a goal to provide a sustainable wage the best I can. And two, uh, it just helps us hire better candidates. So when we offered health insurance, the level of candidate went up quite a bit. And so one, that helps business. Um, but two, it has been a goal for a very long time to provide these things. So, you know, it's, it's not always easy. And, uh, you know, we had a lot of employees that are still on like parents' insurance or they're on their spouse's insurance and it like made all these things difficult and we had to nav navigate through all that and there's like, you know, you think, so think about this for a minute. If you've ever had to sign up for insurance paperwork for yourself at your job, imagine you got to do it for like 15 employees all at once. Like the mountain of paperwork that had to be done and Randy did it basically was just monumental and so just lots of Yep, get that form done. Next form, next form, next form. Okay, now we got to do these 15 forms for all these employees. And he's kept checking it off, checking it off, checking it off. And uh, yeah, so we're excited about it though. Uh, my video on Valisteria and Pogostemus stellatus octopus were great. I bought both. And now after three weeks, I'm starting to see runners. New air stones are awesome. All right. That's what I like to hear. Uh, by the way, if you haven't noticed, Plant pricing has gone down by a ton. So I know that like six months ago, probably, Valisneria was $12.99. Valisneria on the website right now is $4.99. Most plants are about $4.99 with exception of ones that we just can't get any cheaper. So like some of the Anubiuses, uh, Pogosimus Salatus Octopus is $9.99. There are some that just logistics from around the world and the way they grow and that kind of stuff, they're never going to be able to get down that low. That being said, we had very good talks with some of our plant farms while we were down in Florida and we kind of negotiated and we've made some things happen. And so that is the aquarium co-op way. When I can make big things happen, I will try to pass those savings along for you. And I kind of, I, in my mind, here's what I think about it. If I can save a dollar, if I can negotiate with, let's say with Fluval, if I can negotiate them down a dollar retail, right? So we, let's say we we're selling this for 20 bucks, which we sell for more, but let's say it was 20 bucks. Now we can sell it at 19. Like I basically split it with you guys. I go, okay, I'll sell it to them at 19.50. We'll keep 50%, 50 cents of the profit. That'll go back towards making videos, paying a sustainable wage for employees, all that kind of stuff. And so most companies, they just take the, the break and they go, all right, we're just making more profit. But I believe it makes us more competitive as well. As we can bring the prices down because you guys buy more, the next person comes along, never seen aquarium clock, goes, dang, Valisneri is $4.99. I'm going to buy some of that. And as that wheel keeps turning, we might be able to in five years go, wow, we're buying so much. We now can get it a little bit cheaper. We can offer it for $4.50 instead of $4.99. Like at a certain point, you hit the bottom of like, it's never going to get cheaper than that with shipping and just an employee touching it and all that kind of stuff. But when it makes sense, that is what we're trying to do. We try to bring the price down uh, when we can. So, uh, and I know I missed Super Chat. Are Tiger Barbs and Silver Tip Tetras compatible? I would say yes. They are very active fish, both of them. That being said, you can get Tiger Barbs that are real ornery, but, but the uh, Silver Tip Tetras are wicked quick. I'm going to bounce over to the normal chat, and then I'll bounce back and finish some more Super Chats because I feel like I've been waiting. I've been... I've been uh, neglecting the normal chat for too long. So, ooh, I like that uh, octopus um, emoji. Ooh, I gotta get like, so someone was asking earlier if I play 
uh, video game stuff. Yes, and board games. I need like a Cthulhu octopus looking uh, emoji, I guess, what they're called. So, yeah. All right. Just got my first ever order. You got Dwarf Sag and a shirt. Yes. We, uh, I don't know if I mentioned this either, but this might have happened while we were out of town. I don't even know anymore. We now, we worked it out with uh, USPS, so we also ship on Sundays now. So we're kind of at Amazon status where we literally can uh, pack and ship out plants on Sundays and they go on planes and everything. So, And we also get that on holidays. That being said, on Sundays and holidays, they pick up earlier in the day. So we won't be, we can't ship as many as we would on any normal given day, but we basically are shipping seven days a week, even holidays and Sundays and all that kind of stuff. So we, as we scale, it's just getting better and better, right? You know, cause people are shocked at how fast we ship. That is our goal. Like a lot of times. So if, if I'm being honest, our, we we set up our business. So our goal is barring some kind of internet outage with some kind of our software or an employee not feeling good or something like that. Our goal is that we have all the orders done by noon and so Pacific time. And then usually our orders are getting picked up by like between two and four o'clock in the afternoon, right? So if you place an order at noon Pacific, chances are highly likely it'll go out the same day. And we structure our business to do it that way. Like a lot of businesses go, oh, well that would be tomorrow's shipment. We want everything to leave you know, ideally, if you wake up and you're at work and you're on your break and you order something, we want you to get that notification later in the day, like, wow, it shipped today, right? That's how we compete with Amazon. So we're structuring our business that way. And we really try to like, we try to control all things we can control. And that is we can ship quickly. We can't control if, you know, if uh, the post office is like, oh, look at this package for aquarium cough and it's like throws it against the wall, right? Like we can't control that, but we will, everything we can control, we want to do it quickly. We want to do it right. We want to, you know, put a smile on your face. And then when something like that does happen, we go, well, you know, un unfortunately you're the one out of, you know, 8,000 people we shipped to this month. And, you know, it's kind of, what we know is we're shipping 8,000 packages a month and 1% is going to have a problem. Like, you know, that's 10% would be eight. 800, right? So it'd be like 80 people are gonna have a problem. And that's, it sucks. Like Candy's job sucks because she's gonna deal with all 80 people that are angry. But, you know, we do get a few emails from positive from customers like, wow, it came in great. Thank you. But for the most part, when we do it right, it's kind of a silent thing of like, okay, yeah, so 7,820 people very happy, 80 people super upset. And we, we will take care of those people and all that. Um, but it's easy in that job. We're like, oh, geez, like 80. Imagine 80 shipments go wrong a month, right? Well, that's almost three a day. Three people super angry every day. You know, like, oh, this thing's all broken. And people are so used to the internet, like making them fight to prove that it was wrong or broken, that they start off angry. And it's like, no, 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 just, just take a quick picture. Yep, that thing exploded. New one's on the way. Don't worry about it. Like, don't, nope, you don't have to send back. Like if we have an easy green or let's say this thing, let's say this Rapache exploded on the way. You don't got to send the old one back. Like we're not, we don't want to be like, oh yeah, now we throw that away. You can just use it and keep it. We'll send you out another one. Like easy peasy. We'll move on. So yeah. All right. Let's see here. I want to pitch to the local fish store to expand their stock. They don't have the best supplier. Very difficult in getting fish. How do I get info of good wholesalers available near me so I can present this to them? I don't know if you'll be able to get that info, Marcus. And part of it is not every time will a store want it. So a lot of stores will go with who's easy. So there's stores will call you up or not stores, a wholesaler like, Hey, it's Johnny over at the wholesaler. It's Monday morning. What would you like this Thursday? Oh, you need some Tiger Bobs, do you? Okay. Yep. Oh, 24. Let me write that down. And they'll go through their whole list with you. And some people love that, right? And they're willing to pay more money and get a lesser quality for it. And then there's people that are like, Oh, they'll only take an email or only take a fax and all that. So you could even go down the rabbit hole and find out they're one of those people like, oh, I just like to deal with Johnny, he calls me up and asks me what I want. Um, and then there could be minimum order problems. Like you got to kind of know about, can the store make that $1,000 minimum with this company or can they only make it $300 orders or, um, I don't know how to approach that correctly. And I don't think, I think what you would have to do honestly is you'd have to like approach the, the store and be like, hey, I want to help you. 
And they'd have to trust you enough to be like, okay. And then be like, who are you ordering from right now? And can I have access to your reseller's permit so that I can approach these other companies and possibly get a new list from you, right? I think that's about the way you could try and do that. Because it's, it's going to come off weird otherwise. So, yeah. All right. Roy Stern says, I got an order of plants that the tag was from Sefner, Florida. I'm 30 minutes from there, and it's 50%, hold on, and it's 50% less to buy from you than it is from your local fish store. How? So that, okay, so that sentence, the plants came to you from 30 minutes where you live, and at that fish store, they're twice the price. It's a scale thing, right? So... Because we buy massive amounts of plants, like tomorrow I'll pick up full-on plant boxes, right? We're going to pick up 11 of those. Now, we'd probably be picking up 16 or 17 if they weren't out of the ones we needed, right? But because we buy so much and we ship them via airport, it doesn't cost a whole lot more. So, like, maybe the first box is $70, but then every box after that's only $15 in shipping when you pick it up from the airport. So, scale there helps a little bit we get best pricing from a lot of the farms because we're ordering so many. Like your average store probably orders half a box. And here we are trying to order 15 to 20 boxes from them, right? And they usually are out and that kind of stuff. So that's usually a scale thing. And also we want to, we know we're competing with everyone else online, right? And maybe your local store is thinking like, well, if you buy it in person, I'm not competing with Aquarium Co-op. And to some extent, that's true, right? You might buy from us online, read our description, click a buy button, be done. In store, you might ask two hours with questions. And you have to kind of recoup that money from somewhere. And if you're not turning a ton, like if it's one employee and one customer and it takes two hours, like you got to recoup that money. But if there's like four employees in the store and there's a bunch of people selling a lot of stuff and that one customer takes two hours, you can kind of absorb that into the whole team of people and all that going on. So it's that weird scale thing. And But yes, I do use that logic a lot of times of like, when if I was consulting that store, I'd be like, tell me again how it makes sense that you could drive 30 minutes and pick those plants up and you got to sell them more than I do and I got to ship them to the opposite side of the country. You know, and so I like, I use that kind of logic to show them like, this is what's possible for you. You should be able to sell them for less than I can. Should. Now, that being said, they probably don't have a YouTube channel. They don't have the scale going on, but they could work towards that. But a lot of people, you know, like right now, if you were to think like, oh, I'm going to be a YouTuber, like it's going to take so long to get to 300,000. The answer is yes, it is going to take three hours of an insane amount of work to get there but you will never get there unless you start putting in that time. Like that's just, it's gonna take a long time for us to get to a million. I'll never get there though if I stop today, right? So you just gotta keep chugging along and doing what you can do to get there. All right. A new member of FishTube, welcome to the team. Are there any fish and plants you definitely would not recommend for people with liquid rock 8.4 water and absolutely would recommend. So the absolutely would not, there's a lot. There's a lot of wild caught stuff in the Amazon that don't make sense there. But stuff that I would recommend, definitely live bearers, um, most plants really, like a lot of the plants coming out of Florida are in liquid rock water already. Um, very few don't do well there, but if you're injecting CO2, that'll bring the pH down a little bit. But lots of live bears, African cichlids do well. A lot of the African plants, Valisneria, uh, Balbitis, Dwarf Sag, all that kind of stuff will do very well in that water. Um, but part of the problem is when you recommend that kind of stuff, people will buy it like, it didn't do well at all. Like, well, you didn't know how to grow plants. Or, you know, oh, you actually had some salt in your water, which that's a problem. Like, you can have very high pH and hard water, and you have saltwater intrusion going on. So there's all these little little things that even when they're recommended, like, well, we still got to do some fact checking. How many generations should you inbreed guppies? Um, at least two if you're trying to set a strain, right? So like if you have two fish, let's say you got a red one and a blue one, and they come out and they're all yellow. You're like, what? That doesn't make any sense. You breed those yellow ones, then you'll start getting red and blues out again. So at least two. 
but you want to go much further if you're trying to set it. And a set strain, typically in the library world, is breeding true. So that means the parents, let's say they're blue, that means if they're set, 92% or more of the babies will come out blue. So. Uh, ooh, that's super chat for candy. This is my appreciation for candy's time and customer service. A big thanks to the co-op way. Great business model. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. I'm sure she does as well. You know, things keep going well. We're going to have to add to that customer service team. You know, not right away, but, you know, as we grow, we'll have to make another decision. Do we bring on another full-time um, member or not? And part of this, like, I, I do factor in things like memberships. The more memberships we have, the more I'm like, okay, so how could I utilize this money? And it's like, well, all right, I could bring on some more time. Like, we don't have nearly enough memberships to pay for, like, let's say, Candy's wage, right? But as this thing grows, I can go, well, it makes a little more sense. Like that's half the way I reinvest this money. It doesn't, the problem is it doesn't come back as like, oh man, because I was a member, that crazy project got done. It's more like, oh, you've just been helping the internet a few hundred questions a day at a time, you know, and it kind of goes under the radar, but slowly it's like raising the tides a little bit of just where people can find some help and that kind of stuff. And it is beneficial to us. Like the more people we help, the more they should buy from us, the more we can reinvest, the more we can turn the wheel another time. So do I have any plant grab bags in the store available this weekend? Uh, I have no idea. In general, we're kind of against the grab bags because they take a long time to explain what's in them. They take a long time to process. And so um, we kind of have the opposite problem lately that we can't get enough plants in. So I don't know. That being said, it's like if they're there, great. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't like go like, oh, I'll go in this weekend because they might, or I won't go because they won't. Like it's so random that you can't really plan it at this point. Big Texas tanks, good plan or good advice. Thanks. I was thinking of Endlers and got some nice ones um, in at work. Scarlet or the three dot, or the breeding for profit route library with plecos and shrimp. I would go with the Scarlet. The Scarlet ones look good. The three dot look good also, but the Scarlet's like most people think look good. Woo, two new members, Big Tex and Kelly Lugo. All right, we made it to the bottom. That means I can, I should say I can get back, like back to the normal chat where anyone's message could be heard. Luck of the draw. Hit that like button if you haven't. All right, where am I at? I'm lost. Here we are. Wonder Shells versus Crush Coral versus Equilibrium asks someone. Well, a couple different things going on there. Wonder Shells and Equilibrium, similar, right? They're both going to add a lot of calcium to the water. Crush Coral adds a little bit of calcium. I can't talk. It's starting to get long, right? A little bit of calcium, but mostly it's going to add alkalinity or buffer to the water, right? So Wonder Shell doesn't add a ton of buffer, but it does add some. And Equilibrium, same way, Equilibrium's got a lot more trace elements. So I can say what I personally use is I haven't opened up a jar of Equilibrium in probably five years. I do use Wonder Shells, and I do use, I use Crushed Coral in every single aquarium I own. So that's a for sure. Wonder Shells, I definitely use in hard water tanks, and I use them in my plant tanks. Like we drop them into the warehouse plant tanks and that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. We have a good note. My wife's saying we can't hold orders. Yes, we don't hold any orders. So if you like place an order today and you're like, oh, I need to have it held and ship it on a Saturday so it arrives next Wednesday, like all of that we don't do. And it's because we can't handle 47 different people with custom orders. Like it just isn't going to work. So as a company wide policy, we do not hold orders. We don't do any special instructions because those are all just points in which we can let you down. We'd much rather go, look, we're not going to do that. And you go, well, that's dumb. I'm not going to order from you. That's fine. You can go order someone else. But we don't want to make you think we're going to do it and then fail you. That's even worse, right? So we just straight up don't do any of that custom holding or write hold at the back door, ring the doorbell six times, any of that kind of stuff. Like it's just, it has to work that you place an order, it gets shipped to your shipping address We'll do everything we can on our end to make sure that happens correctly, but we're not set up to handle all the customizations. So, am I still coming to Chicago? As far as I know, I will be in Chicago for Aquashella. As far as I know at this point. How do I stop, 
how do I stop my cichlids from fighting? Uh, line of sight block. So what does that mean? That means like if this was in your tank and you have a cichlid on this side and a cichlid on this side, they can't see each other, right? Out of sight, out of mind. So putting vertical pieces of slate or big plastic plants or big pieces of wood so they have to swim around them to see each other will really cut down on a lot of that fighting. Yeah. A super chat from Twin Cities Guppies. Any chance this makes the same fluidized filter for smaller tanks like 10 gallons? Uh, so this is where I get in trouble with Randy. Uh, they do currently, I have a prototype. And currently the prototype, the way it stands, I won't carry it. Because it's not as good. So it takes more air to get it to run, which you think like it's a smaller one, it should take less. But when you take, so it's a shorter version, right? When you shorten it down, there's less path for the air and the media to tumble. So you take out, they basically like shortened this by like a third and they took a third of the media out. Well, that proportion doesn't work as well. So I'd really crank up the air in this test prototype. And the way it stands right now, I wouldn't bring it in and sell it, I don't think. Um, that being said, if like all my competitors bring it in and people just go, screw it, I don't care. I'll use a billion liters of air to run this thing, then maybe I would. But right now I'm like, we got we to gotta fine tune it a little bit more. And so um, it's still running in my fish room, testing it and all that. But we're going back to the manufacturer going, here's what we think. Can we make it a little bit better? Do we need to take a little more media out? Do we need to add, you know, it could be all the difference of just adding one more rung back in, right? The problem is that they have to pull a whole new mold to do that. And so we really want to get to the bottom of what part of it is causing this. And it still rotates. It's just a lot more clunky. This one's really fluidized. And you're like, yeah, it works really well. The other one's almost like, ah, it kind of looks like it's not working right. It would work. Like it will process waste, but it's just not as good, right? So it being not as good, um, yeah. It's, we don't want to create a nightmare for candy of like, I bought this one. It doesn't work nearly as good as the taller ones. And yeah, I want to make sure we get it dialed in before we ever bring it to market. And sometimes manufacturers don't want to hear that. They're like, no, it works good enough. Like, well, good enough is if it's still worse than the one we had, it's like, I don't know if I want to be responsible for that. So uh, Jamie McDonald says, I was the president of the Candy Overhauls fan club before she worked for you. She is the best. She is. I was the president, or I was at least an advocate behind the scenes. She's been part of the mod team at the Aquarium Group Support for a very long time. If you never joined that Facebook group, you could. Uh, but it's a no tolerance, like, Debbie Downer uh, place. So you can't hate on other people. You can't call people out, you can't swear, all that. Like it's only positive vibes over there. And she's been part of the mod team over there with some other of our mods for a very long time. And I'm just thankful that I'm in a position where I can start hiring some, right? Like that's the ultimate, well, I shouldn't say it's the ultimate, because not everyone wants to be a moderator to get hired, but one of the best feelings, right? Is like, oh wow, now that you've been doing this for free so long, so long I can pay you to do it, right? Like that's better, so good. Inbreeding people uh, is bad for health. Is it true for fish? Yes, when we don't. So this is going to sound weird, but when you don't cull deformities is when it's bad. So same for humans, because if a genetic defect comes out, they live their whole life, they could reproduce, that could further more genetic defects. With fish, we can cull them, right? So, oh, it came out like with a bent spine. Okay, well, we'll feed that to another fish and the line kind of gets better and we can outcross and because we can control how the guppies are breeding and who they're breeding with, we can, or not guppies, but is it only guppies or just fish? With fish, we can control that. So we can kind of repair it. With humans, there's no one like overseeing it all just controlling like, oh, we can fix, you know, like my family runs very high with some different cancers. Like there's no one overseeing to make sure that if I was to have a, a kid that I would mate with someone that has the genes to reverse that right and so that's where with fish we have the ability to kind of correct some of that not that we always do like we can be lazy aquarists and just down breed stuff um but that's why it's not inherently just always bad for fish because in a managed breeding program 
it can be actually be very beneficial. It's one of the ways that we make fish really strong also. Um, so just like we can make things worse, we can also make things better if we're really paying attention. So, yeah. If you haven't bought the nano spider wood or nano rock bags, buy them. They're great. Yes, we do have nano wood and nano rock around. And we're going to run out. So we're going to run out before our next container arrives. So just know that if you're on the fence, right now we have a few weeks worth. And then there's going to be a shortage for a few weeks. And then it'll come back. But, uh, or you know, at least it should. I can't guarantee it. I never guarantee a product until it's in our physical presence. So, you know, for all I know, there could be a strike at the shore. Or, like, they don't sell it anymore or whatever. Yeah. Uh, love your business. Trying to improve the shop I work at, inspired by your model. Can I ask why you use both blue and black backing on your tanks? Are there any pros or cons? So, hindsight being 2020, we would only do black, and that's because most fish look good against black, and then you don't see algae on the back wall. On all the blue tanks, all the employees have to scrape the blue or have to scrape against the back because that's it, the algae shows against it. And then like black fish will show against a blue background, but there's not that many of them that it makes that big of a difference. So I would just do all black backs on the tanks. So, um, answering. All righty. Find my way back here. My employees always forget that we live stream. So they're always like, hey, I'm doing a thing. What's the answer? Uh, let's see. Super chat from Keenan and Ryan. Well, thank you both much. We've got 13 minutes left. What are we get? What trouble are we gonna get into right now? It's getting hot. Can you see the sweat? Look at that. Gross. 82 in here now. It's getting hotter. It's getting hotter by the minute. Oof! And I ran out of drink. I got I got old water though. I'll drink it. What's next in the fish room? Um, let's see, I've got green water everywhere. We were gone for two weeks, so need to address that. I might do a video where I make Daphne eat it, because that might be fun. Gotta set up some pumps on the 800 gallon. I need to put the side on the 800 gallon. I need to plant the 800 gallon. I've gotta clean up the, uh, the fish room is just a mess. There's so much stuff of just like, filters and products and all that kind of stuff. I just need to clean it all. Uh, and not clean it, like it's not physically dirty, just like, what are we gonna do with this? Like, oh, we gotta give that to employees or we gotta do whatever, right? So it's just stuff is stacked up. Like I have a, I have a vacuum that's sitting in the box still, gotta get that out of the box and actually do some vacuuming and, um, but yeah, basically I just gotta, now that I've got time, I can start an active product. So first thing first, I wanna edit some videos. Well help edit videos with Jimmy and get some of that lined up, then um, then work on videos. That's all I want to do. So, yeah. <laughs> Primetime Aquatics, the only one man enough to show off those sweat stains. Hey, you get it all. You get the good and the bad and the ugly here. Like, it's just, it's what it takes, you know. People think it's easy, but there's so many lights on me right now to light us up. You know, I haven't done this in a long time. Like, you turn out all the, so I've got one overhead light on, like a normal room would have. You turn those off, and it looks like this in here. Like, it looks crazy dark, right? But I have a normal light like you would normally have in a room. You crank on all these lights to make the show happen, and, uh, you know, it's all the bright lights. That's why we see, like, rock stars and comedians and stuff just sweating bullets. All those lights on them, the heat projects onto you. So, well, I do daily content. Never. I shouldn't say never, but it is basically proven to not help a channel. And if I was going to do it, it would be purely because I want to make a video every day for you guys. Like, oh man, like I would live stream from Peru or something every day. Like something that warranted it. But um, yeah, I, I believe that quality over quantity because I've tested quantity and it doesn't pay returns. And it actually hurts. And some other YouTubers are going through that right now. They're like, oh, dang, it literally is like way more work. And this is not better at all. Whoa, scared me. Thank you. One of the puppies needs to make an appearance. I'm scared of when you pull the USB. 
What is that? Oh, on here? Yeah, you shook her awake. Here, little old lady. Oh, 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 Sassy the Destroyer. Someone was asking who Sassy the Destroyer was one time. This is her. As you can see, she is the world destroyer of souls. She's 15 now? Yeah, she's now 15. We've had her since she was 12. So, three years. And she was a rescue. And she helped us in some of the oldest videos where... We made her push a flu ball light into the water to make sure it was waterproof, and what's that? Oh, we had her since we were 11. My bad. We had her since we were 11. But getting old, she's blind now, and Henri, she attacks everyone that ever visits. And, uh, yeah, she, she always gets super, uh, I would say, emo when I leave. Anytime I start packing the suitcase, she gets real worried that I'm never coming back. But she does cry. Yeah, she's a sweet little old lady. But that's what I do. A lot of people ask me, like, what do you do outside of fish? And pretty much only my my puppies and hang out with my wife. I don't really have too many friends because I just work all the time. So I have dogs and I have a wife. Yeah. I do play games once a month. That is true. So, all right, let me hand back. You were making me hot. Oh, there we go. All right, where was I? Is a video from the wild caught fish from Florida coming? Yes, we haven't started editing it at all. There's a lot of raw footage. Ooh, I, did I, yeah, I did tell you guys a little bit, but uh, Goliad Farms, mind-blowing. Mind-blowingly cool, so much footage. We gotta, we gotta uh, edit. So that's gonna be a long one. So someone asks, I, wanna, I really wanna stir up the controversy, okay? You ready? You ready? I'm curious, what dog food do you feed her? So no matter what, this is, this is the best part about being a YouTuber and being like a quasi celebrity. No matter what I say here, someone will be angry. I could say, I only feed raw. How dare you? I could say, I only feed killable. How dare you? I only feed, how dare you? Like no matter what I say, just because the world breaks into groups, right? So with that being said, this is what I feed. My wife and I have chosen to feed our animals. We feed um, a canna kibble, which would be the duck and Bartlett pear. And we also feed waruva, um, what is it, chicken little, I think, which is human-grade chicken, gravy, peas, carrots, and all that. Like, it's human-grade stuff. And it all that food combined is very expensive. Like, if you were going to feed, like, a lab, you'd go broke. But being that we have, like, sassy weighs under four pounds... And like our, our biggest dog weighs, I think 12, 12 pounds. And so being that all our net weight of dogs is like under 20 pounds, um, it, you know, we get to, in my opinion, feed some good quality foods that I enjoy and are easily accessible to us. And, um, we can afford like it's a small investment for the amount of enjoyment I get out of them. And yeah, we really limit their human intake food just cause not good for them. So, so no matter what I just said there, I'm sure there's X amount of people that are saying you know, Ruvuva has been recalled. So is our can. Like every food out there has had a problem. Even every human food. So, you know, I just know that no matter what I say there, I can only like enrage people. <laughs> so, Caroline Epler says, "Hi Corey, I've been watching your videos for many years. I learn something constantly. Thanks for the info and the fun. Well, hopefully." That'll happen for years to come. If I keep learning, which I learned like a lot at the, the fish farm tour we just did, if I keep learning and I relay it to you guys, I feel like you'll keep learning too. And I just say that because if I never go out and adventure, I won't learn anymore. And then you'll be like, yeah, I've heard that. You've already told us that, right? So that's one of the reasons I keep trying to continually go and do things I haven't done is I'm much more likely to learn something I didn't already know. So... All right. I don't see the old Neverclog Airstone. Do I no longer like them or the new ones that much better? Uh, the new ones, in my opinion, Barney, are just that much better. So this is the weird thing about our company is once my mind is convinced that a product is just superior, I see no need to sell the lesser product. Unless there's like, well, I could see, like you could make an argument like, well, kids love that multicolor Airstone. That's true, but this one's just better in like every way. 
And so I just make the switch to that. Being that I own the company and I'm the guy that's like on R&D, we can make super fast changes. Like someone in the chat earlier pointed out that we had a uh, mistake on our red flame sword description. Within a minute, I fixed it because I'm also the web developer. So because I have that skill set, we are the opposite of the companies we're like ranting at. It's like, it shouldn't take you six weeks to make a change. I can make that change in 12 minutes. Watch this. Done. You know, like even when I was there with Fluval, I'm like, how to take your guys a week to, uh, you know, fix your website. It was down for a week and you didn't even let Twitter know, like any of your social media. You just said like, it'll be up tonight. Five days later, still not up. Like, come on. We all know. Oh, sorry, guys. Having troubles. Get Going to get the website up as soon as we can. It might take a few days. Done. Like, in a company with 100 employees, one of them can do that while they're sitting on the toilet. You know, one person can can break that vow of silence with the public. So, yes. All right. Tips on breeding quarries with German Blue Rams. I've got three different species of quarries, and they're in a 55. I don't think there's anything specific to them other than just feed them really well. Lots of worms, but just don't bloat out your your rams. So... Yeah. What's my dream team of fish in a tank under 10 gallons uh, from tank brand itself to lighting and stocking? Okay. What What is my dream team? It's probably going to be in, it's going to be in a fish room tour. So my perfect 10 gallon, honestly, is nothing crazy fancy. I really do love the economy Aquion kit. So it comes with this crazy hood with two screw, well, you get to screw in the bulbs. I love that thing. It's like under 30 bucks. It's really good. Like one of my, the guy that helped me build my store, he was able to carpet out dwarf baby tears in that thing without injecting CO2. Like it's just a really good ratio of light to water and all that. So I really love that. That's what I would go. The lighting, all that, you'd be 30 bucks. You'd have CFL bulbs. You'd be golden. Uh, in terms of like filtration, I would use on a 10 gallon, probably an aqua clear 20 or so, maybe a sponge filter. One of those two. I'd, Depends on where I had it and what aesthetic I was going for. Is it aquascaped or is it like a breeder tank? And uh, I personally, I, I have a hard time. Like if you restricted me down to one aquarium, it would be cherry shrimp with guppies every time. Every time. I love looking at a tank. I love looking at every fish room I go to and they got guppies and they got shrimp. I always want to look at them every time. So that's what I would do. And it's just such a good combo. And it's so easy for so many people to do it that I think it works. So... Yeah. Aquion Water Changer or Python? Uh, I recommend Python. That being said, Python, if you're listening, let's fix the pricing so that Amazon isn't destroying the market. Like I, I do use and love your products and I sell some of them, but some of them I can't even, um, you know, some of them I can't even carry because the pricing is so ridiculous. Yeah. All right. We've got a couple of minutes left. Mmm, large companies. Oh, Google Maps accidentally showed our long driveway to, as a public road. Took a year. Yeah, we had that problem with, uh, so the aquarium co-op on the Google Map for like two years showed it as across the street. So people would just call and nonstop, like, I can't find your place. And I'd be like, no, we're in the, the Ferdale Village. And they would look and they wouldn't see us because we were kind of, Ferdale Village is like huge, right? So there's like this whole front line of buildings and there's a whole nother line of buildings with a theater and all that kind of stuff. And it was really a pain. They've, they've got it fixed now, so no one has that problem. But, yeah, that the big corporation thing, it's weird to watch stuff, like, work its way through a chain. You're like, oh, geez, there's still another two months of people it's got to go through. Ooh, cold Diet Coke. Ooh, yeah, that's good. One day, somehow, we'll get the attention of Coca-Cola, and we'll have a Diet Coke. Party. That'd be amazing. I want to show up to like Aqua Shell and be like, I'm sponsored by Diet Coke. Everyone, Diet Coke's for everyone. Need to make that happen. I use a Python with my FX4. So nice to change water directly into your sink. Yeah, that's good times. What do I suggest for the better media for a cancer filter? I'm big on basically sponge and bio rings. I don't have either of those near me apparently. 
but I would use those. Yep, like coarse sponge material, bio rings. You can do some fine filter, but I really like using that on a hang back instead. One of my thoughts on a sorority tank, <clears throat> I've yet to see someone do it and have it work out that wasn't less than like 300 gallons. So they're just an aggressive species. They're prone to getting egg bound just as the females already. They're highly inbred. I, 99 times out of 50, that's right. Two to one odds is not gonna work. Uh, I just never see it work out for more than like a year to 18 months. Now I'm sure there's some people that have pulled it off. I'm not saying there's not, but out of the hundreds and hundreds of people that have done it through our store, it's a train wreck every time. And they're always like, man, I don't know why the internet says this works so well. It's like, I don't know either. It doesn't work that well. I want it to. I want it to work amazing because you get all the color, you get the better personality. Like there's all the benefits except for the fact that it's doesn't work. That's the only problem. So got four pea puffers, a hard time getting them to eat. Baby brine shrimp, they eat but lack nutrients. Mouths are too small for frozen blood worms. Suggestion of live worm cultures, other food. You could do white worms, live white worms, get some live daphnia, um, mix in some cyclops, some frozen cyclops. That's a good one. Um, yeah. So Sassy is a hilarious name. All of our dogs, we don't change their name. So whatever name they had at the rescue facility. So Sassy was Sassy. We had Wincy. Wincy had never seen grass before and lived in a kennel and would sleep and lay in her own filth and so she was wincy because anyone would come by her she'd wince right so she's wincy and then we have uh we did we, we modified one the other rescue didn't come from a rescue facility but rescued through some people elderly had it and it was tinkerbell became tinky because it just it's just hard to be like you know screaming like tinkerbell tinkerbell like tinky and she you know stinky and you get all these little funny names you can do so yeah 702, that means it's time to edit <clears throat> my voice going. <clears throat> time to edit videos and eat dinner. So, uh, what's my opinion on Eheim Substrat Pro? It's a porous material, it works fine, it's not worth the premium price, but if you already had it, use it. That's my number one. Like, if you already own it, use it. If you're trying to choose between 50 different options, then we can talk about semantics on where value for money's at. But, you know, again, if you own a cancer filter, great, use it. Just don't go buy one for your 10 gallon tank if you could get away with something much cheaper for the same effect. So, please explain the Hank Hill? What do you mean? Yeah, I just love Hank Hill. <clears throat> That's why we have, oh, see, my voice, my voice always goes with the events, and then I have a hard time I talk too much when I get back from the events I just lose it repeatedly and so I actually have to it's a weird thing like my wife whenever I get back she's like what what happened tell me <clears throat> and it's my voice is so shot it's even hard to talk to my own wife so these these live streams are actually kind of hard well I gotta drink some more <clears throat> so I just like Hank Hill and I like his wholesome practices and all that and like I just sell propane, propane accessories. I do the right thing, you know, all that. I And I grew up on Hank, on King of the Hill. <clears throat> See, my voice, once it goes, it's just gone. And so I've had uh, Lady Bird. We've had Boomhauer before. We've had, <clears throat> we had Hank. My first Mubu Puffer was named Hank, right? I needed an old man name. We named Hank after Hank Hill. And so it's kind of a tribute back to him and just the show in general. And uh, yeah, so... I think this is a good enough point to stop when your voice will literally starts giving out. There's not a lot more to go on. So um, I will see you guys next Wednesday. We've got at least a few weeks in a row. Uh, if you didn't already buy your tickets to Aqua, not Aqua Shell, the AGA, the Aquatic Gardeners Association Convention, it's sold out now. So nothing you can do about that. You can still get into the vendor room, but you can't attend the talks or the banquet dinner or anything like that. So you can still come out and hang out and nerd out with us, but not in all the things. So uh, hit that like button on the way out. Subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, look for a video later this week for sure. I got to go rest my voice. So thank you very much for all the super chats, all the new members. Super appreciative. And uh, there's someone that says, like, see you on the flippity floppity or something. That's what I want to see. I think it's like, it's got to be a, like a, I think that's an office reference, the office. 
the flippity floppity. See you on the flippity floppity, flippity side. Either way, we'll see you next time. Appreciate it, guys.